Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Meraki Monday. I'm Bobby Young, and I also have Dan Stewart with me. Today, we are going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we'd like to do a little bit of kind of a product showcase, uh, specifically on the MV32 camera from Meraki. Uh, the reason we ended up, you know, kind of thinking this through and, and doing kind of a focal point on just this one camera is that uh, the more we looked into it, we ended up getting one for our own uh, business transformation center lab. Uh, and we started playing around with it. And we realized that it's kind of like an all-in-one camera solution for a lot of different situations. So we'd like to kind of take the next couple minutes and kind of go through some of the features. Uh, if you're not familiar with the MV line of cameras from Meraki, we'll do a little bit of an overview there. Um, and then we're gonna uh, do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the features that make the MV32 special. And then Dan's gonna follow up with a demo of some of those features and, and hopefully you guys can get ex, as excited as we are about the MV32. So Dan on the screen has some of the feature highlights and this is just kind of clear across the board for any of the MV cameras. Um, if you're not familiar with the MV line, uh, Meraki started building cameras, uh, security cameras in uh, about, what was it, four or five years ago? Yeah, but when you're watching this video, it's uh, 2016. So yeah, about five years ago. Um, and uh, started getting into it uh, in all honesty. And again, Dan and I have been working with Meraki even before they were purchased by Cisco uh, here at Ingram Micro. So um, when they said, hey, we're getting into cameras, um, I actually have a physical security background as, as does Dan uh, when we used to work our pre-sales tech support. Um, so we both kind of like said, hey, that's really good. But it's kind of like when a, you know, when a little toddler like, you know, uh, you know, makes you eggs in the morning. It's, you know, you kind of just like, oh, thank you so much. Wow, that's great. Let's just take these and, you know, put them on the table right here. Um, so we kind of were a little bit reserved when we kind of looked into it. Um, in all honesty, I think their first iteration of cameras that they announced and came out with um, were a little lackluster against the industry. Um, and in, in complete honesty, I thought that this was going to be kind of one of those things that they kind of, you know, went into and then decided that it wasn't worth it and, and you know, um, you know, leveled off. We're used to the Cisco conversation, which is why I thought that. Um, but uh, with Meraki, they stuck with it. Uh, they really started putting a lot of like analytics and just different features that you just don't see from a lot of other vendors in the space. Um, they're coming at it, obviously, from a networking perspective, where a lot of physical security cameras like Toshiba and Sony are coming at it from kind of a more of a pro AV side, right? They're the ones that build the CCDs. So they're looking at, at the type of glass, you know, the type of, of, you know, physical camera and the, you know, focal lengths and stuff like that. Um, not necessarily from the network integration side, right? A lot of these camera companies are, are you know, kind of traditionally, um, you know, analog camera companies and kind of getting into the digital space. Whereas, uh, Meraki was able to look at it completely differently and say, hey, you know what, you know, what do we need from a camera from a networking side? So some of the feature highlights that we see across the board are that every single camera has on-camera storage. Uh, there's no um, digital video recorder, no DVR that needs to be purchased separately for, for, you know, traditionally where you'd have a camera and then all the recording would be kind of done on this kind of central unit, kind of like think of like your old TiVo that you might have had back in the day. Um, there is a cloud archive possibility. So the on-camera storage, basically everything is, is stored locally on the camera, just like, um, you know, think of this similarly as, as you might take pictures on your iPhone or your Samsung device, uh, your Google, you know, uh, but then Google Photos or, or you know, uh, Apple backs them up into the cloud, you know, on a nightly or kind of an as needed basis. We can do optimized retention where it'll actually take you know, all of the recording over the last couple of hours or the last couple of days, and then kind of, you know, uh, smart edit it. So to say, hey, you know what? We recorded the last 48 hours, but we noticed that, you know, these chunks of time, there was nothing going on, right? There was no movement. There was, there was nothing in the room, right? Lights were off, whatever. Um, so we're going to kind of smart remove that and then give you the capability of recording more onto that space. From a playback perspective, there's the motion search capability where you can just say, hey, I want to see, um, you know, all of the times of day that this camera showed motion in this little corner. Um, you can also do some crazy things with analytics, which actually deserves even its own video that we might actually be producing later on. Um, everything is encrypted by default. 
uh, just like any other Meraki product, uh, easy firmware updates are a standard. Um, it's part of their enterprise security suite. So when we start talking about the network and start talking about the firewalls, the MV camera lineup is really a good way to, um, you know, take that out of the digital space and start talking about that physical space as well. So when you say, hey, how are you, you know, managing and, and, and securing your network, you can also say, okay, with the data center, with these physical branches, how are you guys physically securing your buildings in your different locations? And then as we showcased in a previous video, um, everything does have granular access control as well. So um, think of the administrative functions on Meraki's dashboard, um, kind of on steroids, where you can kind of give even more granular access control to different administrators. Um, because the understanding is that you might, when it comes to the MV space, um, you might have people that are either contractors or third party security companies or something that are managing just that part of your network and you don't necessarily want to give them access to all of the other portions of the Meraki dashboard that you would usually see. So Dan, you might be asking yourself then, uh, what makes the MV32 special, right? Of all of the other products in the MV line, uh, we have this one that we are showcasing today. Um, the MV32 is what's called a PTZ camera. And if you're familiar with cameras from the olden days, right, you might have seen an old, you know, um, uh, James Bond movie or something like that, where someone is looking, you know, through a camera and they're kind of point tilting and zooming a camera, actually using a little joystick that used to connect to their system. Um, so they would actually kind of be able to control this whole thing around, right? Um, if this was like, you know, James Bond or Mission Impossible, you'd have, you know, James Bond that would be just sitting there looking at the camera, waiting for it to kind of tilt out of motion so that he can run past it, right? And then it would tilt back again, right? There was that little like five second delay in those movies where they had time where the, you know, the cameras weren't showcasing it. Um, that was ultimately the problem with point tilt zoom cameras would be that, you know, that there is kind of this dead space. If you're tilting it and pointing it in one direction, then you're basically blind and completely in the other direction. So the cool thing about what the MV32 does is that it actually records on this, this super fisheye lens that it has just facing down, um, it records a full 360 degree image, uh, similarly to the one that you see on the left there. It's got an 8.4 megapixel sensor. So it's basically kind of like half a 4K, right? Because it's not actually a, a 16 by nine or a four by three screen that you would usually see. The CCD is actually tw uh, 2,058 pixels by 2,058 pixels because we're recording, you know, basically the equivalent of a circle, you know, rather than, you know, kind of a, a full, you know, uh, a full screen image that you would see on the right. Um, in, just like the other MV cameras, there's 256 gigabits of storage right on the camera itself. Um, and again, the really cool thing about this is that it has that processing capability on camera to be able to turn the image on the left that you see there and kind of de-warp it into the image that you see on the right. So the nice part about it is that as you're viewing maybe this section or zooming in on, on where those shirts are, you know, the red, uh, uh, red, white, and blue shirts over in the corner, you're still recording everything else that's going on in the store. So for a small retail space or a small room where you might, you know, have, um, you know, the ability of, of like, if you, if you kind of, you know, squint and see there in the, in the image on the left, that's a small, I, I believe that's the, the, the Cisco store in San Jose and that their, uh, their main office. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a good size. I want to say maybe 20, 30 feet by maybe 15 feet across. And we're able to see the entire store in that one image. And then be able to, when we actually, you know, maybe there's an event or something we want to look back on, we want to do a smart search, um, then we can actually, what we see is that de-warped image that we see on the right. So we can actually click and kind of zoom that around and, and move it around. You can actually even do that on the, um, uh, the app that's available on Android or the Apple Store. Um, you can actually just use your finger to kind of just move it around just like you're making a 3D, uh, a 360 degree image if you've ever tried to do that. So as with most features from Meraki, uh, this is something that's better seen in a demo than it is probably on a PowerPoint deck. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it over to Dan Stewart from our Business Transformation Center at Ingram Micro, who is going to kind of walk us through what it looks like on the Meraki dashboard to play around with the MV camera, specifically the MV32. Dan? Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate the lead in there. Uh, let me hop to my Meraki dashboard and 
I've already logged in and I've already jumped to our MV32 camera since that's the spotlight of this video here. And I want to take us into the full screen view to get the full effect of what we're seeing in this space. So this happens to be our Cisco Experience Center, which is part of our Inger Micro Business Transformation Center. Um, and this room is about 20 foot by 20 foot. So it's, it's a decent size room uh, to give you some uh, parameter or context of what we're seeing here from this space. And the camera itself sitting mounted on the ceiling, physically the camera is about the size of a hockey puck. So it's very um, discreet in our uh, nice furnishings here. And I get to see everything going on in this space from this room, the door, the window, the different video screens from our WebEx environment that we have. But as Bombi alluded to, when you take the same camera and change the view over to the digital pan tilt zoom or the de warped mode, we now have the ability with the power of my mouse and ability to drag it around the screen, I can go through 360 degrees and even though the camera is recording at full time anywhere it's able to see, I can adjust my view as a um, someone looking for something from the camera or a uh, security guard or somebody that wants to gain information on a specific view that's more easily understood of where it is in proximity to the room, I can do just that by moving my mouse, clicking and dragging, and pulling that image to where I need to fix that focus on what I want to see in particular. If you use your mouse scroll wheel, uh, you can zoom in to the image. So if I want to see the, the door itself, I can zoom into it and zoom back out and have full effect uh, all the way pulling back to the fish eye view once again. So it's a very handy camera that allows you to have a very small footprint that gives you full view and then a de-warped view so you can see everything like you had several fixed focus cameras in that one space which is great for uh, cost adjustment across that conversation. Now viewing the camera on a single camera basis is one way to go about it but another way we can look at these cameras is through Meraki's video wall functionality. So if I hop to the video wall section of the camera's capabilities, I have a couple of video walls already set. One showcasing actually our video transformation center, and then one specific to our Cisco Experience Center. In this view, a video wall is typically meant to have more than one camera. But what I want to highlight here is that we're going to take this single camera in this space and adjust it so it actually gives us a pretty powerful layout of our environment. So at the top of our screen here, we have this edit layouts button. I'll click on that and we get into a mode where we can add multiple cameras into our view. Up to 16 total cameras can be brought into our space to see uh, everything that we have within this uh, facility. If I scroll down the page a little bit, I can see all of the cameras with a, a quick snapshot of what's going on in that space, and I can drag them into this camera view and then manipulate the image or placement on this video wall of where this camera is going to be. So for this instance, I'm going to keep our one camera with the fisheye view in this location. I'm going to add the same camera into this video wall but I'm actually going to drag it and use the de-warped image of which you have the option of a de-warped view or a full frame view. And I'm going to put this de-warped view and focus on the door. I'll even see if I can get a position. There we go. I'll add the de-warped mode. And now we've added another angle from the same camera, giving us what looks like two different cameras in our video wall. If you notice, it gives us a little bandwidth calculation at the top because I'm viewing this data coming across uh, the cloud stream. It's compressed H.264 uh, for high quality coming across the uh, internet to me uh, viewing these cameras. And I'm gonna add one more view as well. I like to view not just the door, but I wanna see the window of people walking by as well. I'll add that view in and I'm gonna drag it down here and rearrange how that view looks. And since I have a lot of space still left over, I'm actually going to expand that view of that door. I'm gonna expand the view of this window and I'm gonna go ahead and save this layout. 
once that layout is complete and it is available, I now have what looks like three different cameras in my space. But in reality, as we now know, this one camera that is the MV32 gives me these discrete views that I can actually operate like independent cameras on a video wall. But now I get this coming from one purchase of one camera into different views, which is very handy to essentially stitch these images together and give us some great output in a video wall view. Well, thanks very much for that, Dan. We promised this was going to be a short one, so this is going to be the end of our video for this week. Uh, as always, if you wanted to see any of these features, any of the cameras, or actually even any of the other Meraki products as well, uh, please feel free to reach out to Dan and myself in the Business Transformation Center. And other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much.